The first stimulus package was launched in March last year and came in at 2.2 trillion US dollars. A second one amounting to 900 billion US dollars was launched in December last year. This third one comes in at 1.9 trillion. Altogether, that's about 5 trillion US dollars in stimulus, almost 24% of US GDP. Analysts are optimistic that all this will help the US economy recover in a big way. Initially, we actually had the US uh, economic growth for 2021 at about some 6%. But because of this 1.9 trillion stimulus, we have actually revised upwards our forecast for US GDP growth to about 7.98%. So you can see that that's quite a huge uh, um, uh, revision upwards, actually. And on top of that, that will also have an impact on, on, on the rest of Asia, because as you know, um, a lot of our exports um, still go to the US. And of course, the US being the biggest economy in the world, um, if there is a recovery of that sort in the US, it will obviously pull the rest of the world together with it. You need growth to come in in a big way, and you need growth to be sustained. One of the big winners of the stimulus announcement was the stock market, which has continued its upward momentum. While technology stocks like Apple and Tesla continue to do well, some experts say that value stocks or cyclical stocks may be the ones to watch. In the next 12 to 18 months, as the economy recovers and gains more traction, the sectors that have underperformed, the value stocks, the cyclical stocks that benefit from the economic recovery, that will leverage all the economic recovery, those are the ones I think that will take over the baton from the technology stocks. And so, you know, the banking sector, the real estate sector, uh, the commodity sector, industrial sector, uh, energy sector, sectors like this, I think will tend to do well in the next 12, 18 months, and they could outperform uh, the technology stocks. And this could bode well for the Singapore stock market in particular. We have a big representation of value and cyclical stocks on the Singapore stock market. And these stocks have not performed as well in the last uh, 12, 13 months. And so going forward, you know, uh, value stocks listed on the Singapore stock market, uh, which form a sizable component of the market, could actually do quite well. Investors should also keep an eye on the US dollar, as analysts are not sure how it will be impacted by the stimulus package. In the past, stimulus packages usually meant a lower US dollar, but this may not be the case this time. The reality is if the US growth story outperforms and if US asset markets outperform, and of course the move in US Treasury yields, which has been on an upward trajectory, that all seems to bode well for the dollar, at least in the interim. Now, of course, further out, there are structural concerns for the dollar. But in the interim, we think the dollar will continue to strengthen against a host of currencies uh, in at least the next few weeks and even few months. A stronger US dollar is good news for the US consumer as it increases his purchasing power. But it is a double-edged sword as some analysts worry about inflation should US consumers start spending in a big way. November, December, and for most of January, most of the Americans, they couldn't go out to spend freely, largely because, again, because of the social restrictions and also because of the particularly harsh winter that they had in, um, in January and February as well. But now that the weather is getting warmer, the level of infections are coming off, and of course, the vaccination process has progressed much faster and much more smoothly than expected. You will find that a lot of the states are now starting to actually ease up and loosen all these restrictions. Now, if the Americans come out to spend, they have a huge amount of enforced savings to actually tap on. So that means that the second quarter inflation is likely to actually increase quite dramatically. Some are also concerned about rising bond yields and the effect this stimulus package will have there. However, OCBC's Vasu Menon downplays this, saying that bond yields should head higher with economic recovery. I think the markets are rattled by the uh, rising bond yields because of the pace at which bond yields have gone up since the beginning of this year. It's gone up almost uh, 70 basis points in a matter of two and a half months, which is quite a lot for a short period of time. But the level of bond yields right now, 1.6%, is still very low compared to history, and, com and it's still not gone back to the levels that we saw pre-COVID. And I think investors are looking for an excuse to take some money off the table, at least in the short term. So the rising bond yields have now become an excuse for investors to uh, turn a bit jittery, take some money off the table, but it doesn't alter the medium-term picture. 
One thing all analysts agree on is that a strong U.S. recovery will benefit the whole world. The trade-driven countries have been the biggest winners and will continue to, in our view, be uh, the biggest winners in this environment. Where we will see some catch-up, in our view, is those economies that are more domestically orientated, such as in India or Indonesia, for instance, or eventually when we see tourism open, I think countries such as Thailand will also benefit. But for now, uh, it's really the trade-driven economies that are going to probably benefit the most from strengthening U.S. demand.